All right, so how dangerous is erythritol? So hopefully in this video, I will be able to give you my opinions on erythritol and better answer the question if you're using erythritol, does it put your health at risk? And I'm doing this video because just recently, a research study was released linking erythritol use to certain cardiovascular conditions in certain individuals. And since then, the media has picked up on this study and has kind of ran with it. And we've been getting tons of questions in our offices about erythritol use. And if someone is using erythritol, does it put their health at risk? So I'm gonna to try to kind of go through the study and answer some of those questions and concerns. And I will be looking down at my computer from time to time, so please forgive me, I made a lot of notes in prep for this video. Okay, so first, and just to keep everything as simple as possible, let's break the study down into, into two different components, because basically there was two components to this study. Number one is the study demonstrated that there was a correlation between high erythritol levels in a human body and heart attack and stroke in people with pre-existing cardiovascular conditions like diabetes, like heart disease. So there was a correlation between high erythritol levels in a human body and stroke and heart attack if you had pre-existing cardiovascular conditions. That's number one. And then number two, the second part of this study was that in lab studies and in animal studies, so not in a human study, so in lab studies and in animal studies, it was demonstrated that erythritol, high erythritol levels led to an increase in clotting. All right, so I will link um, everything that I'm going to discuss, everything that I'm going to reference, including the article that I'm speaking about specifically in the description box below if you want to check it out and do your own research. But a few things about this, um, let's dive a little bit deeper into this research study in particular and a few points about it. Number one is there's absolutely nothing wrong with the research study. It's not flawed in my opinion. I have read through it a couple times now, um, but it does not show a causal relationship. And the researchers go as far as to say this. They say that or they cannot say that erythritol use causes cardiovascular problems. They're just linked together. So when one goes up, the other one goes up. That's kind of how a correlation uh, works. It doesn't mean one caused the other. There could be a third factor that causes both. And again, we'll speak about this a little bit later. Um, there have been a number of other research studies stating that erythritol is safe and some even state that it is healthy and has a positive effect on cardiovascular conditions. So again, this is just one study. It is the sexy one. It's the popular one for the time. It's the one that's got the buzz. So people are really gravitating towards it. But really, in my opinion, we have to look at all of the evidence together, all of the research on erythritol together to be able to make an informed decision. This is just one study. All right, now really to break down this study in particular, let's talk about the first part, meaning that correlation between erythritol use and cardiovascular problems in certain individuals, and let's discuss the individuals. So first, we're talking about people that were, in my opinion, super users of erythritol. So they studied people that use erythritol at the level of 30 grams per day. So that's the level they had to get in order to show that there was a link between erythritol use and cardiovascular comp complications. So where did they get this 30 gram number? Well, what they did was they stated that 30 grams was equivalent to about a pint of keto ice cream. So I'm not sure what ice cream they're talking about, but if you look at a pint of ice cream, if you look at the nutrition facts on a pint of ice cream, uh, one pint is not a serving size. That's three times the typical serving size. So this is not a normal amount, or it shouldn't be a normal amount for a human being to consume as a whole pint of ice cream. It's supposed to be broken down and it should be a third of a pint of ice cream. So Really, I think that their numbers as far as what is average are a little skewed in this particular case. So my opinion is 30 grams is an awful lot and the FDA agrees with that statement. The FDA states that if you are consuming 30 grams or more per day of erythritol, then you're in the 90th percentile of erythritol use and that the average erythritol user uses 
or consumes about 13 grams. So they're studying uh, consumers that are over double what the FDA says is the average. So that's very important. They're talking about, again, super users, in my opinion, of erythritol. And WebMD takes it a step further. WebMD states that people can safely consume roughly one gram of erythritol for every two pounds of body weight per day. So that would mean, let's just use even round numbers. If you are a 200 pound person, you could safely consume up to 100 grams of erythritol. That's straight from WebMD. Again, I will link this, these studies, these articles all in the description box below. All right, and adding to this is is that all of the individuals in this study already were people that had cardiovascular complications in place like diabetes, uh, like cardiovascular disease. Um, so these people are much more likely to use a sugar substitute because they want to avoid sugar because it is giving them these negative health problems or it's linked to these negative health problems. So they're much more likely to use erythritol and possibly overuse any non-nutritive sweetener like erythritol. And again, we'll talk more about this later. All right, so let's move on and we'll talk about the second part of the study, which is that um, erythritol causes an increase in clotting. And again, this was in lab studies, not human studies, and in rats. And it was observed that adding erythritol increases the clotting rate. And in people already who have cardiovascular conditions, you don't want inappropriate an inappropriate increase in clotting because that can be very detrimental. It may lead to things like thrombosis and stroke. All right, so in my opinion, what happened here is that the researchers found a result that they did not expect. And they come right out and say it in the study that they did not expect to see erythritol linked to cardiovascular conditions. And when they did, uh, they didn't really understand why. They were kind of confused by it. So they went on a hunt looking for a mechanism that could possibly explain why erythritol could cause cardiovascular conditions. So they went actually looking for an answer. And unfortunately, at that point, it kind of introduces, in my opinion, opinion, some researcher or examiner bias where when you go looking for something, it becomes a lot easier to find than if you were just open to whatever interpretation of the data that is presented to you. So again, my opinion here is that we have to take this second part with a grain of salt because just because there is a mechanism, and again, it wasn't done in humans, does not mean that that mechanism is what causes one from the other, erythritol causing the cardiovascular conditions. It certainly cannot make that bridge. Uh, there is no way to do that in this particular case. Okay, so if you're using erythritol, is it dangerous? So let's try to start by answering how much erythritol is actually in food. So first off, erythritol uh, occurs naturally in the environment. Um, what we're specifically talking about is manufactured erythritol that is added to products in place of sugar to help lower the calories and the carbohydrates. So let's look at a few different examples here. Here is Hershey's Zero Sugar Syrup. And as you can see here, per serving, there is two grams of erythritol. It states right here on the nutrition label. So in order to be able to get to that 30 grams, I, I don't know what you would have to do. You'd have to turn the bottle upside down and drink it, I would suppose. Um, let's look at another product, Truvia. Per packet, there is two grams. So you would need 15 Truvia sweetened coffees per day, 15 again, to get to that 30 grams per day that the study used. And then we'll look at one more, a drink here. We'll look at vitamin water. Uh, that has five grams of erythritol per bottle. I don't know how active you're being. I don't know what your workouts are like, but if you need six of these per day, I think there's something else wrong with your workouts. So getting to this 30 gram per day erythritol use level that the study suggests is unusual in my opinion. You would have to, in my opinion, again, be misusing erythritol or using it to a level where it's not intended to be used in order to get to this level. 
But again, in my opinion, that still does not mean that erythritol is causing or contributing even to cardiovascular conditions. And in my opinion, it isn't. And again, I will now explain why. So correlation does not equal causation. Uh, again, the study was performed without controls, so no assumption of causation could be made. And in my opinion, one huge factor must be controlled for, and that is the underlying health conditions of the participants. So again, this was not done in quote unquote healthy uh, patients or healthy participants, this was done in people that's cardiovascular condition was already compromised. So just because A is correlated with B does not mean A caused B. This is a often misunderstood principle here. So A and B <clears throat> could be correlated, but they could be caused by C. C could be causing both. So again, what this research study showed was that people with cardiovascular conditions already in place as their risk factor for developing a heart attack or stroke went up, their erythritol levels went up as well, so they were correlated together. So let me give you a couple alternative reasons why this might happen that have nothing to do with the erythritol actually causing the cardiovascular problem. All right, so here's scenario one. Let's say that the individuals with the higher risk for developing a heart attack or a stroke have the more advanced cardiovascular disease already in place. Their diabetes is maybe more out of control. Their cardiovascular condition is just more advanced. They are more unhealthy than the other participants. And because of this fact, they are more motivated or they are desperately using non-nutritive sweet like erythritol more often than the other participants would be, so they would have more erythritol in their bloodstream compared with the other individuals, but they would also have a higher chance of having a cardiovascular event like a stroke or a heart attack. But again, the erythritol has nothing to do with causing it. They're both caused by a third factor, factor C in this particular case. All right, and I'll give you one more. Let's just say, for instance, that the people with the higher chance for developing strokes, heart attacks, they are the ones that just cannot get their diet under control. They're just overeating, overusing um, different products. They just can't figure that part of it out. They potentially would be overusing erythritol and maybe other things as well, maybe eating too much sugar at the same time. So again, these other factors were not controlled for. So if they are, are their diet is already quote unquote out of control, then maybe they're overusing erythritol, but they're also doing other things that increase their cardiovascular risk. So then again, these erythritol and heart attack and stroke may be correlated, but again, caused by a completely separate factor. So my point with these two alternative scenarios is just to point out that it may be true that erythritol does somehow cause cardiovascular problems. We just can't know that, and in my opinion, all three of these scenarios are equally as likely. They're just, one is just as likely as the other. So I guess one point here is that if you are concerned about the use of erythritol and its potential negative health implications, erythritol is easily avoided. So all you have to do is basically not use non-nutritive artificial sweeteners of any kind. I mean, these things are not necessary. What they are is they're tools, things like erythritol, stevia, uh, sucralose, the more artificial, um, non-nutritive sweeteners. These are tools to save on calories to replace sugar. So if you are somebody that feels like losing weight, you wanna lose weight, but you feel like you just can't without having a sweet fix every now and again. And that's really when erythritol and these other non-nutritive artificial sweeteners will be useful tools. So, but certainly erythritol, Tall is not mandatory. Stevia in the raw, Gatorade Fit, Walden Farms chocolate, all products that we typically recommend with our clients, none of these contain erythritol and the list just goes on and on. So erythritol is something that you can pretty easily avoid if you so choose to. 
Okay, so here is the conclusion, my complete conclusion, my opinion. Um, number one is I will not be chucking erythritol out as a useful tool in any of my offices, any of my programs. I don't think we're there yet. Um, the problem number one may be, may be that we are mega dosing with erythritol. So that may be a problem. It may be an issue that you're over consuming erythritol. So I don't think that is appropriate with anything, erythritol or otherwise, you shouldn't be over consuming it, consuming it to a level uh, that it's not intended to be used. So that could be uh, one of the issues, again, potentially. So there's some evidence of that when we see it in the clotting study that we discussed. Um, but I believe that there is not a causal relationship between erythritol and cardiovascular disease. Based on what I've read, I don't believe that erythritol causes cardiovascular problems, especially because there's been other research that's countered this particular research. So we as humans readily put things in our body that are absolutely horrible for us and have been proven time and time again to be horrible for us. We will now want to avoid erythritol, but we'll, we'll continue smoking, or now we're gonna go back to sugar, which is absolutely ter terrible for you, refined sugar, especially in the same amount as we're talking about erythritol use, but we're gonna go back to using now sugar instead of using erythritol. That would be crazy in my opinion. We continue to drink alcohol when we know it is it destroys our bodies. So again, I guess my point here is that we shouldn't be such sheep, and just because we hear a study and it sounds sensational, um, in the media that we immediately have to change everything that we're doing, especially when the research does not show that there is a causal relationship between two things. So as always, moderation is going to be the key. If you're moderate about what you put in your body with, with most things, you're probably going to be pretty safe here. If we continuously eliminate anything that has any adverse research to it as far as it causing any health issue, we're gonna be reduced to eating kale and beets over and over again. We're just not going to be able to eat anything. There's research, there's so much research out there that links certain things to health problems, but it never comes to fruition that one actually causes the other. So we can't just keep throwing every product out whenever a new uh, research study comes out. We've got to look at all of the evidence together to make a really informed decision. So I guess one big takeaway here and something we can learn from this study is that moderation with everything is the key. Everything should be used moderately and not over what it is intended to be used, including erythritol in my opinion. If you wanna learn more about us, please consider downloading the brand new, that's B-R-A-N-D-N-U-E, app. It is our proprietary weight loss app. You can find it on Apple and on Android, and I will leave a link to download in the description box below. And until next time, everybody stay happy, stay healthy, and I'll catch everybody in the next video.